Hello everyone. So welcome to the first lecture in Organic Chemistry 2. So let's start the first lecture with alcohols and phenols. So before we go into the lecture, so remember the common concepts that we have reviewed before. So what I want you to do is to make sure that you review Organic 1. So Organic 1. Especially I want you to review nucleophilic substitution and elimination and I also want you to review addition reactions and finally also try to review mechanisms so if you remember it would be great if you do not remember it's a good thing to just skim over in organic one nucleophilic substitution and elimination reactions addition reactions and reaction mechanisms now so with that out of the place so let's get into the chapter the first lecture so here we are going to talk about alcohols and phenols so in this lecture we are going to talk about the structure and properties of alcohols the acidity of alcohols and phenols so if you remember that alcohols behave as an acid and we'll also talk about properties of alcohols, property preparation of alcohols and preparation of alcohols via reduction. So we'll do substitution and addition first. And then we'll see diols. So diols are basically alcohols with two OH groups. So with two OH groups. And then we'll see Grignard reagent. So if you remember, Grignard reagent is basically a compound with magnesium bromide attached to it. So if you have R M G X, so if you have Mg magnesium halide attached to a long chain carbon, we call that a Grignard reagent. Next, we'll see protection of alcohols, how to protect alcohols from de decomposing into other elements, and we'll also see how to prepare phenols. So a phenol is basically a combination of benzene and an OH group. So we'll learn more about it as we go along in the chapter. Next, we'll see what are the reactions. The common reactions of alcohols we already know are substitutional elimination. And one another extra part that you're going to learn is oxidation. And then we'll see redox reactions that happen in the body. And we call them biological redox reactions. And finally, we'll talk about oxidation of phenol, what happens when you oxidize phenol. And finally, we'll see some synthesis strategies of how to synthesize compounds from alcohols. So because alcohols are easier compounds to get, so it's easy to start from there to synthesize more complex compounds. First part of the chapter, structure. So what is an alcohol? So alcohol is any organic compound that produce, has an OH group attached to it. So this OH group makes it an alcohol. So for example, if you have ethane, if you have a compound of ethane, so this is ethane. But if the same compound has, I'm sorry, this is a compound of propane. If the same compound has an attachment of OH group attached to it, so we call that propanol. So how do you write the compound in general, alcohols? So remember that any compound that has an OH group attached to it becomes an alcohol. So these hydroxyl groups are extremely common in nature because most compounds do have some form of an alcoholic presence in them. The main reason most hydroxyl groups are present is because of water. Remember that water is H2O. When in acidic medium, it splits into H plus and OH minus. Remember that this OH minus is what qualifies any compound into an alcohol. For example, uh, one of the compounds is grandizol. Grandizol is the male ball weevil. So this is the insect uh, that eats cotton seeds. So if you see cotton plants, if you see a foul smell near a cotton uh, plantation, that means this is the compound, the FSX pheromone released by this is called grandizol. And the other one that we generally know, but we do not know, see about it a lot these days is chloramphenicol, phenicol. So this is an antibiotic that is isolated from streptomyces venezuela bacterium. 
So this is one of the most potent ones against typhoid fever. So even now it's being used as a potent drug against typhoid fever. Hydroxyl groups in general natural compounds that we see in our body, one of them is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a steroid that contains an OH group. So it plays a vital role. So cholesterol is the basic uh, compound that is required for synthesis of many steroids. For example, if, you if, if your body produces testosterone, it needs cholesterol. If it needs estrogen, so if it needs estrogen, it needs cholesterol. Many other of these kinds of uh, steroidal compounds need some form of alcohol, the cholesterol needed to it for it to do it. Next, the other one that we generally know is vitamin D3, which is called cholecalciferol. This is the main uh, compound that's used to regulate calcium levels in the body and to maintain bones. And the deficiency of this particular vitamin is uh, results in weaker bone structure and it also causes osteoporosis so osteoporosis is where holes in your bones so deficiency can lead to osteoporosis at extreme levels so this also contains a OH group another one that we see is geraniol which is a compound isolated from roses and geraniums this is the compound that's used in perfumes. So perfumes also have some form of an OH group attached to them. So now we discussed alcohols. Let's discuss phenols. So phenols are basically a hydroxyl group directly attached to a benzene ring. So for example, if you look at here, if you have a benzene ring attached to an OH group, that compound is called as a phenol. The name comes from the idea that benzene is called phen and when you add an OH group it became phenol so this is the, the reason why we call this phen and if you remove that OH group and if you have an empty orbital without any attachment to it so without the hydrogen presence we call it phenyl the name is similar to that now one of the common compounds that uses uh, Phenol as the base ring is dopamine. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter present in the brain. So it's the most common one that results in deficiencies, causes uh, Parkinson's disease. Next, you have urushiols, which is the present in the leaves of poison ivy and poison oak. And this is the compound uh, that results in skin, irrit skin irritation. So when you touch a poison ivy and when uh, your skin touches to a poison oak, so this compound uh, gets stuck onto your body and it causes skin irritation. So Next is one other compound that uses phenol as a base compound is capsaicin. Capsaicin is the main compound that is responsible for the flavor of chili peppers, the hotness. So most uh, peppers are measured on a scale, what we call the on a scale of capsaicin. So the amount of capsaicin that your body uh, that is released into your body is basically called the uh, the compound that's responsible for spicy hot flavor. The another compound that's most commonly seen is tetrahydrocannabinol. It's called also the formally called THC. THC is the psychoactive drug that is present in marijuana. So this is one of the ones that causes, uh, you know, the concept of euphoria. So the, and also a psychoactive compound. And it also uses phenol as a functional group in the, in the creation of the compound. Next, in how do you classify or how do you name alcohols? So alcohols, we name them based on the same procedure that we used in to name alkanes so but the only thing is we use minor modifications so first thing we identify the parent chain but how which which is the parent chain it should also be the one that includes the carbon that's OH is attached to next second we also have to identify and name the substituents and number three we have to assign a locate basically a number to each of these substituents and given the given the carbon and that contains the OH the lowest number possible at an under under any case next list the numerical substituents before the parent name in alphabetical order so and ignore any prefixes for example like iso so when you name them we have to name based on the alphabetical order of the compound not the prefix attached to the compound next the oh locant is placed just either before or before the parent name or before the ol suffix so how do you name them so let's take a simple example for example, let's take pentane. 
pentane attached to an OH group becomes pentanol. So what we do here is we remove dash E at the end and we write dash O. So we do not write the number when it's on the first column. So we do not need to write the number when it's on the first column. So for example, if you have, let's say an example of another compound, let's say I have an example of butane here. So if I want to write butanol, so you have OH. So this is the compound butane. You do not need to write one butanol. The only reason you don't need to write that is because it's already on the first column. So we write 1, 2, 3, 4 in this way. So it becomes butane. Remove the E and replace it with O. So it becomes butanol. Next, always include the compound that's connected to the OH group as the in the parent chain. For example, if you take a compound of compound like this, here we can consider that the longest chain is the one that contains the most number of carbons. But if that compound contains an OH group, you will have to count that as the first carbon and then count the parent chain in whichever is the longest. So remember that the OH takes priority over long chain. <coughs> so OH will always take priority over the long chain. Next. How do you assign the locant? Always assign the locant so that the carbon that has the OH group it is attached to the lowest number. For example, here when you count from 1 to 2, here we are always counting from the forward order. Just because there is a double bound at the edge, do not count it from backwards. Always count the one with the OH group first before you go to the double bond. Because OH takes priority over the double bond. So again, OH takes priority over double and triple bonds so remember that part next the OH locant is placed so the OH locant is placed either or before the parent name just before the OL suffix for example in this compound here the OH group is on the third carbon so there are two ways of writing this one we write pentanol So we can write pentanol and write the number in front of it or we can write pentane without the e dash and write the number in the middle and then write all so pentane 3 all so both the names are correct there is no distinction between them so whichever one you write it it qualifies as the right compound so it doesn't matter where you write it next for cyclic alcohols so cyclic alcohols, you'll always have to use the OH group as the first carbon. So the carbon that's connected to the OH group always gets the first priority. For example, here, you will have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is cyclopentane. So remember that the original compound is cyclopentane. So we remove the E. So and we end up with O. So O attached to it. Next. When you count in terms of the other sites, for example, if you have a chiral center, this is an example of a chiral center. So here the chiral center contains, remember that when you split it into two parts, both sides are not the same. So you will have to give this one a certain preference. So depending on what is connected to that carbon. So here this carbon is connected to a carbon that has two other carbons, but this carbon is connected to a single carbon only. So this gets priority. So when you write the number, you have to write one, two, three. So if you write the structure, so that's 4 and the one in the forward will be H because it's not written there. Next, let's look at the sides. So 2 and 3. Notice that number 1 is in the back, number 4 is in the front. So rotate it across 180 degrees. So you will get 1, 4, 3 and 2. So now you have number one, two, three. So if you count the structure, so you get a clockwise direction. So that's why the name is R. And on the third carbon, notice that the one with the OH group gets the first priority. So one, two, and three. 
So then you have two methyl groups attached to the third carbon. So it becomes 3 comma 3 dimethyl and it has total of five carbons. So it has total of five carbons. So we write cyclopentanol. So this is how you name the common cyclic alcohols. So let's look at some other common names for some alcohols that are commonly used. One of them is isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol is 2 propanol. So you have a propane structure that contains an OH group on the second carbon. So this is called as isopropyl alcohol. The name iso comes from the fact that it divides the structure into two equal parts. Next you have turbitile alcohol. So notice that this carbon is a tertiary carbon because it contains one, two, three side chains and it has an OH group on the fourth one. So there is no hydrogens left. So it becomes a tertiary butyl alcohol. If you name it originally, it becomes 2-methyl, 2-propanol. Next, you have a benzene structure. If you have a benzene structure attached to a carbon, that then attached to an OH group. We call that benzyl alcohol. So, let's try to classify alcohols. So, based on general classification, we classify alcohols into three types. So, one is methyl alcohols. Primary alcohol. Secondary alcohol. and tertiary alcohol so if the carbon that's connected to the OH group only has hydrogens we call that a methyl alcohol but if the carbon that's attached to the OH group has at least one side chain for example one R group so if it has one R group, so we call this a primary alcohol. If the carbon that's attached to the OH group only has one hydrogen and has two side chains, two groups attached to it. So if you have two groups, we call that a secondary alcohol. Next, if the carbon that's attached to the OH group has no hydrogens left and all of them are side chains we call this a tertiary alcohol so this is the way we classify alcohols based on the number of side chains that it's connected to now so remember that the carbon that attached to the OH group is considered the alpha carbon so remember that part so based on that we are trying to consider what is it connected to and how many hydrogens are there next how do you now so in terms of the nomenclature so when you have an OH group that attached to a benzene ring so the parent name is phenol so what does that mean so for example let's take a simple example So you have a benzene ring so that has an OH group and let's say it also has a chlorine group and uh, let's say an NO2 group. Now remember that the structure that's main is always considered the main structure in whatever reason you're going to consider. For example here if it has an OH group then you're going to consider that structure to be a phenol. So we are going to give that structure to be a phenol. Whatever the case is that structure becomes a phenol. Next, the anything that's other than OH attached to the benzene becomes a substituent. For example, chlorine here is a substituent and NO2 is a substituent. Now, understand that when you take a substituent, now we have to start numbering them based on that substituent number. Now, always give number one to the carbon that's attached to OH. Next, give the second number to the compound that's attached to the the proximity in terms of the alphabetical order so you have chloro and no2 is a compound called nitro so c comes first so you're going to go in that order so three four five six so you have three chloro five 
फाइव नाइट्रो टू सो फाइव नाइट्रो फीनॉल सो दिस इज द आई यू पैक नेम फॉर द स्ट्रक्चर सो अंडरस्टैंड दैट वेन एवर यू नेम अम एंड क्लेचर वेदर इफ इफ द बेनजीन हैज सो इफ द बेनजीन हैज एन ओ हेच ग्रुप so we then consider that to be a phenol and we write anything else that's left to be the substituent part for example in this structure this 3 chloro 5 nitro is a substituent and the phenol becomes the phenol so the 3 chloro becomes the substituent so we are trying to write that part separately so remember how to write name when you have a phenol structure so this is how we generally am phenol so what are the commonly commercially important alcohols there are three main commercially important alcohols the first one is methanol methanol is the simplest alcohol so it's basically a ch3 group attached to an oh group so with a suitable catalyst about 2 billion gallons of methanol is made industrially based from common compounds such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen so methanol is a poisonous gas poisonous substance and it's generally used as a solvent and precursor to chemical synthesis and also used as a fuel most common example of a fuel is used in spirit lamps so spirit lamps do not produce any gas the reason why they don't produce any fumes is because of methanol next The next commercially important alcohol is ethanol. Ethanol is generally produced by fermentation of grains or fruits. So most commonly produced by the fermentation of sugar cane juice. So ethanol is generally made via acid catalyzed hydration of ethylene. So if you remember that ethylene is basically a double bonded carbon with four hydrogens. So if you it undergoes acid base acid catalyzed hydration so if it reduce if it becomes in presence of h3o plus and h2o so the h group goes to the less substituted carbon and oh group goes to the more substituted carbon so here you can consider that both of them are the similar both of them are similar so you can consider one to give it a h group so one becomes a h uh, less substituted one the other becomes a more substituted one so if you write down the final structure so we end up with c with an oh group and two hydrogens so this is ethanol this compound is ethanol so also remember that acid catalyzed hydration requires simple amount of a dilute hydroso4 so in place of h3o plus you might also see dilute h2so4 so is a markovnikov addition so it's a markovnikov addition reaction using this process about 5 billion gallons in the us alone is produced so most common uses of ethanol mostly it's used as a solvent and precursor to chemical synthesis and also as a fuel in its denatured state it's used to avoid the, the is denatured generally to avoid heavy taxes so human consumption of ethanol is also a common thing so it's suitable for drinking but it is heavily taxed because the health benefits outweigh the the harms that is done by that of ethanol so there is not much health benefit that it can do but it's tried to you know the way for stopping human consumption is to how you heavily tax them isopropanol is another compound that's used as a commercially important alcohol most common use of this is the rubbing alcohol so rubbing alcohol is isopropanol for example most hand sanitizers use isopropanol so isopropanol is basically a propane structure with an oh group at the center so this is isopropanol so this structure results in Uh, a good way we'll talk more about it at how uh, good it is in terms of uh, you know eliminating germs for uh, isopropanol is generally done by acid catalyzed hydration of propylene so propylene again is 
a double bonded three three carbon structure so and isopropanol is poisonous that's why it generally used as an industrial solvent and most common use you see of it is as an antiseptic and it's also used as a gasoline additive the reason main it's used as a gasoline additive as well is because it can protect uh, the walls of the engine from corrosion next what are the some physical properties of alcohols the oh group is a big effect on an alcohol right so it has a really big effect on its physical properties just the addition of an oh group increases the boiling point of ethane substantially twice the amount that it was originally for example it converts it from minus 89 degrees to nearly 78 degrees the main reason for this is because the oh group can help in hydrogen bonding so the hydrogen bonding converts a sol a gaseous substance so it converts a gaseous substance into a liquid that's the reason why alcohol is a liquid ethanol is a liquid but ethane is a gas so remember the idea there next alcohols in general have much higher boiling points the main reason due to hydrogen bond next so i do not need to explain hydrogen bonding again so you already know the common sense of hydrogen bonding where the oxygen's two electrons get attracted to the hydrogen to the compound the uh, the closest hydrogen that creates a hydrogen bond so this oh bonding between two adjacent molecules is called as a hydrogen bond now any alcohol with less than 3 carbons are generally less miscible in water which means that they have less solvency they do not mix well in water the reason is because an alcohol is an amphiphilic substance what do i mean by that it has both hydrophobic and hydrophilic characteristics So if you take an example of methanol the CH3 part is a hydrophobic part of the alcohol the OH part is the hydrophilic part of the alcohol so because of this reason alcohols whenever you have a large carbon chains do not mix readily with water so that's the reason why you see general alcohols mixing easily but when you see complex more and more complex alcohols they do not mix well in water now another physical property is the alcohol's potency as an antibacterial agent so it also depends on the size of the hydrophobic group so the ethanol is also it doesn't mean that methanol and ethanol are bad methanol and ethanol are also good antibacterial agents but the larger the hydrophobic group the more the potency of the alcohol in being an antibacterial agent but the problem when you go to really high carbon chains is that they start giving out low boiling points so you want a liquid that has a relatively higher boiling point but also potent that's the reason why isopropyl isopropanol is the common compound that generally is used in a regular way so isopropyl alcohol or isopropanol is the most common compound that you see used because one it has a relatively high boiling point and number two it is relatively potent so the alcohol generally needs some water solubility to travel through the aqueous medium to kill a bacterium the alcohol should have a significant hydrophobic region the hydrophobic region is the one that penetrates the micro micro microbial membranes so for example if you take any virus a virus generally has protein structures attached to it and it has a rigid membrane so this membrane is basically a lipid membrane so it basically is a fatty membrane so what happens when an alcohol comes through for example let's say a ch3 compound ch3 bonds with the lipid membrane because it's the hydro hydrophobic substance but it it's a lipophilic substance so not being a hydrophobic substance but it's a lipophilic substance which means that it likes fat so what it does is it tries to attract it towards itself the more the alcohol groups tries to attract itself what happens is that it stretches the membrane so it breaks away the membrane and releases the rna material that's present inside the virus outside causing it to 
get destroyed this is how a general alcohol sanitizer works so the alcoholic group so that's the reason why whenever you say this attraction has to be good which means that if this is a larger part if the hydrophobic part is larger then it means that it's gonna end up having a lot more uh, energy to rip it apart so that's the reason why they can work on bacteria they can work on parasites parasites they can also work on any organism that has a lipo lipid layer around it so this is the common sense of how an alcohol sanitizer can be deadful deadly for microbial agents next the other one that's used as an antibacterial and antifungal agent is hexyl resorcinol is basically a phenyl compound attached to a long chain compound so it's also you has the same characteristics because it has a good combination of both hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions for example this acts as a hydrophobic region and this part acts as a hydrophilic region remember that whenever something is hydrophobic it's lipophilic which means it likes fat whenever something is hydrophilic it's a lipophobic which means it does not like fat so this is the characteristic of polar and non-polar agents and one side is a polar part the other side is a non-polar part next what are the acidity of alcohols generally an alcohol being containing a hydrogen group needs a really strong base to deprotonate an alcohol understand that deprotonation is to remove the hydrogen so most common strong base used is sodium hydride so sodium hydride is used to generate an al a corresponding alkoxide so when ethanol reacts with sodium hydride so sodium hydride is a compound where the hydrogen is negatively charged so this negatively charged hydrogen attacks the proton on the oxygen resulting in so because it already has electrons it basically bonds with the hydrogen and the two electrons that are left goes back to the oxygen and the na plus gets attracted towards the negative charge of the oxygen causing it to form sodium ethoxide and this is a common common reaction that you generally see whenever you use the sodium metal as well it's often used as well so if you mix alcohol with sodium metal that also produces alkoxides so if it generally produces an alkoxide alkoxide is basically the side chain with oxygen with a negative charge next the alkoxide is generally highly stable but not that highly stable as that of an halogen but it's stable it's high more stable than that of a general amine or it's also more stable than that of a general side chain of a general compound how do you know that this is more stable is we use the rule of ario if you remember ario this is the way we used to judge the relative acidity of an alcohol so if you want to go go through so just go back to chapter 3 and in acids and bases in organic 1 and review the ario method so we need to we don't need to worry about a because it's the atom part so here atom here represents the one that's attached to the carbon so the atom that can the more the larger the atom the more acidic the the more stable the structure so for example the oxygen is a little larger than nitrogen so that's why oxygen has literally higher higher has higher stability than that of nitrogen so that's why it uh, lies between amines and alkyl halides so the what are the next factors that affect them the next one is resonance ario remember that ario represents atom and you have resonance induction and the orbital so remember the ario part so we already discussed a now let's talk about r the more resonant the structure so the more resonant the structure the more stable it is the more stable it is the more acidic the compound so phenol is generally a million times more acidic than the conjugate base which is phenoxide which is generally resonance stabilized so remember that the compound the conjugate base is generally a weak acid so the conjugate base is weak remember that higher stability 
means it's weak. So the conjugate base is weak, which means that the acid is strong. Remember the idea is that whenever we judge a relative, a relative acidity of alcohols, we judge it based on the conjugate base. The conjugate base is phenoxide. Phenoxide is resonance stabilized because the negative charge does always moves from one point to another point. For example, if you look at this structure, I've written all the resonance structure that it is possible. Because it's always moving, there is no way for any compound to come and bond with it. So it's a weak base, but it generally acts as a really strong acid. The conjugate part of that base acts as a strong acid. The next property is induction. Induction, remember the induction part is EDG, whether it's an electron donating group or EWG, electron withdrawing group. So an example of an EDG is if you consider fluorine, so boron or aluminum is an electron donating groups. So, sorry, EDG is electron withdraw with donating groups and you have electron withdrawing group. So electron withdrawing group, for example, is chlorine or fluorine. So if you look at a carbon generally, for example, I take ethanol, which contains a general carbon with hydrogen surrounding them. But in the same case, in place of hydrogen, if you put chlorine, which makes it trichloroethanol, becomes more and more acidic. So the, the higher the presence of electron withdrawing groups, the more the acidity of alcohol or phenol. So if it is only on the beta carbon, remember that. The alpha carbon is the one that contains the OH group. The electron withdrawing groups should be on the beta carbon. If they are on the beta carbon, then they will increase the acidity. It can be a both an alcohol or a phenol. It can be any one of them, provided that the electron withdrawing groups are on the beta carbon. Next, the last one is solvation effects. So solvation effects is depending on how uh, easy, easy, easy is it to attack the OH group. If you take ethanol, ethanol can be attacked in any direction because it's free and the side chain is much more free to be attacked. But if you take a terbutanol, its only way to attack is either directly because there's not much leverage for it to go sideways because these block them. The large side structures will block any of them coming from any other direction for example it does not have any way to come like this and attack the OH group so because of that the conjugate base of terbutanol is generally less stable than due to solvation effects now let's take the example so that ends the topic of acidity of alcohols so the more sterically hindered the structure the not so well solvated the structure